when he sat down with me, we were meant to sit down for an hour. We ended up sitting down for like three hours. But honestly, I thought those three hours were just five minutes because I learned so much from my mentor, Toastmaster Ahmed Shukri. For those of you who do not know Ahmed Shukri, Ahmed Shukri has been a Toastmaster since 2003. He specializes in the fine art of speech evaluation and the milestone of his journey in this field was winning the DITAC 2012 title in the speech evaluation category. Round of applause. Yeah. He was also the founding president of Alba Toastmasters and he holds dual membership with FCT, Toastmasters Club and KAT. In his spare time, if he's not speaking or evaluating a speech, Toastmaster Ahmed Shukri can be found enjoying a book or a gripping movie. And with that same fellow Toastmasters, Toastmaster Ahmed Shukri. Thank you very Presenting much. Presenting at workshop in evaluations, which he calls the modified sandwich. I can't wait to hear this Toastmaster I know, Ahmed. I know. Ahmed. I have a feeling that all of you are hungry. Yes, we are. Fellow Toastmasters, I have a few facts before I start my modified sandwich. Fact number one. I am the only person between you and going home. <laughs> <laughs> so please don't kill me before the time ends. Number two. I've been attending Manama Toastmasters since 2003. Mm. And the maximum time I spoke here was two minutes. Table topic? <laughs> no, not even table topic. Introduce yourself. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is my maiden speech in the Namatar Oh, wow. Oh. Fantastic. It's a special thing for me tonight. Yeah. That's why I came <laughs> dressed up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Every day and every morning, the lion wakes up mm -hmm. and the gazelle wakes up. The lion thinks how it will eat the gazelle. If the gazelle runs faster, the lion has to run faster. Yeah. Guess what? I'm a lazy lion. <laughs> and when I come to you here, I just realized I'm going to make them run faster. <laughs> and they have their competition in two days. Mm. So guess what? I'm going to give you only 70% of the secrets. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'll keep the 30 to myself. Oh. <laughs> and number four, I call my sessions edutainment. We're going to have a discussion now. It won't be a one-way highway. You will help me with your ideas, and I will help you with mine. Agreed? Agreed. Sure. So I want you to fill this room with noise and laughter and discussions. Because I'm going to present you with the modified sandwich. The first thing Toastmaster Hannah told me two years ago is that, Ahmed, why are Toastmasters so hungry? I said, hungry? What do you mean hungry? And you said, I went online and I searched for the art of evaluation. And all I saw were sandwiches. Sandwich, sandwich this, sandwich that. <laughs> and I said, that's right. They're probably right. Because I think we have this format in every Toastmasters meeting, in every Toastmaster educational program. You evaluate like a sandwich. Yeah. And raise your hand if you evaluate like a sandwich. That's right, you're on the right track. Yeah. What we do in that sandwich is we tell people what went well, mm -hmm. and we squeeze a little bit of critique in the middle, and we go back and tell them how fantastic this guy or girl was. Right? In fact, what we do is a couple of things. What do you think the reason why I put that brush over there? The paint. To uh, paint. exaggerate the beauty. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> the why do you think I put the lovely lady's face there? Sometimes too, too much makeup. <laughs> <laughs> polishing. You do polishing. Thank you very much, <laughs> Toastmaster. I mean, we like to whitewash, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Toastmaster XYZ, you are 
the next world champion of public speaking. <laughs> you move me beyond all imagination. Your speech tonight was greater than Nelson Mandela's speeches. <laughs> we do it. Don't laugh. You're all guilty. We all do it. We all do it. That's called whitewashing. Raise your hand if you are a whitewasher. I'm not, be honest. I'm, be honest. I'm I am also a whitewasher. Because I'm not whitewasher, that's why I'm in trouble. Be honest. We all, we all have our own white paint and brush and we wash up and down. What about the other icon here? It's an actual reflection. That's not my intention. What do you mean, What we do is when we grab that opportunity to evaluate, we forget that you are evaluating. We become speakers. <laughs> Poor guy over there has prepared himself for three, three, four hours or three, four days, and I give a new speech. When the time is up, oh, I remember, oh, yes, I'm an evaluator. Take two suggestions. Congratulations, that's it. We use the evaluation time as mirror for our own personalities. We steal the thunder from people. Isn't this a crime? Mm -hmm. People are smiling in this room. I like that. <laughs> so what I'm proposing is, I'm proposing a couple of things. All I'm saying is you, you have to go into new rules and you have to assume new shoes. That guy over there, what do you think he does for a living? Miner. Miner, miner. Why did you say he's a miner? Congratulations, you know how a miner looks like. Yeah. <laughs> how about this guy over here? He's a uh, 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 editor. In office. Working in an office. Office? Editor. 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 Nearly there, nearly there. Editor. Nearly there. Journalist. Yeah. Nearly there. He's checking the, uh, the newspaper if it is a proofreader. Very, very there. No, no, not yet. Getting cold. Journalist. Journalist. No, no. Getting cold. He's Getting checking. Language. Language checking. Language checking now. He is a typical newscaster from the 1950s. Ah, newscaster. Mm, say journalist plus. <laughs> right. Now you tell me, you answer me this question. Why did I choose a miner and a newscaster in the same slide? Because I need you to become miners and newscasters. <clears throat> I'll tell you how. I need you to take that sandwich and keep it where it is. Slightly change the labels of your slides. And instead of telling the guy what went well, I need you to become the newscaster at the beginning. As if that speech was a big event, and all you have to do is to cover that big event. And then I need you, Hannah, and the rest to be a beautiful miner, and dig deep and deep and deep into the core of the speech. The harder you dig, the dirtier you become. <laughs> the longer you take to learn the art of digging. In 2010, there was a big news article about a Chilean mine in Chile, where 33 people were trapped yeah. inside that mine. Can you imagine the distance between Earth's surface down to the pocket where they were stranded by elevator, it took one hour. Mm -hmm. One hour of traveling inside Earth. It's the same thing, guys. Good evaluators require time, effort, pain, reading, understanding, knowledge. Because the more you become equipped, the harder you'll dig. And last but not least, please close properly. An evaluation is just like any other human affair. We need to start perfectly and end perfectly. Raise your hand if you run out of time when evaluating. Mm -hmm. What did you do when you, when you ran out of time? Rush. <laughs> Must have said How did you rush? Speak too fast. Thank you. Thank you. Must have said abrupt ending. <laughs> you have dropped, abrupt the ending and you say, back to you. Other than that, back to you.
an abrupt sudden change. You end that relationship without even saying goodbye. So these are the three things I'm going to deep dive on all the three of them. Number one, I need to build a hook, a hook to my evaluation. And a hook is created when I give people frameworks. When I start my evaluation, I need to build a framework. A framework is the procedure I'm going to evaluate based upon. Toastmaster, as a merchant, like to create philosophical frameworks. Last time when he was in Dubai, in DTAC, he said, good speeches start when the speaker ends. This is a framework that you're gonna build your evaluation upon. And there are three very, very distinctive way to start the framework. The first one is called thematic. You build a theme. You emulate the speech in a metaphor. When I was beginning my journey in, in evaluation, I used to create themes. I say, speaking is like singing. Speaking is like painting. Speaking is like cooking. Now I know it's a trick. If you equate speaking to other themes, you are enticing people by giving them something else, a different theme. But trust me, it helps. When you become stronger and more confident, you will leave thematic evaluation and go into the next level. You go into the procedural evaluation. See, these steps are one by one. When you start to become a, a speech evaluation champion, you always start with this. I know a speaker in Bahrain who tells a full story before evaluating. He goes like, really? speaking is like a fairy tale town. In a fairy tale town, you get fairy tale ladies. You get nice trees. And he spends one minute explaining the fairy tale. So thematic evaluation is very attractive, but it wastes time. It wastes a lot of time. But you know what? You want to make your evaluation attractive, right? That's why, as an, in a new newscaster, you need to also limit how much you put that spice in the theme. When you become more uh, experienced, you go into the procedural evaluation. What is a procedural evaluation? It's very easy. You say, in the next two or three minutes, I'm going to evaluate this, this, and this. I'm going to start by doing this, mm -hmm. then I'm going to move by doing this, and I'm going to end by doing this. This is your style. You love to organize your evaluation in a format, in a procedure. Other people like to put an acronym, three M's or three S's, style, structure, message, meaning. There is a procedural evaluation, very by the book and very organized. You want, if you want to sound serious, use this method. If you look too young, if you have baby face, and you want to sound credible, use the procedural style of newscasting, the beginning of your evaluation, the framework. And when you become a big boss like Toastmaster Asrar Merchant, <laughs> you use linguistic abilities. You play with your language. You start using concepts. And the more concepts you use, the more lost they are. <laughs> <laughs> and the more sure you are you're going to win. <laughs> Can you guess how I win speech evaluations? Mix of them. No, I actually focus on the last one. Oh, I confuse them. <coughs> and when they're confused enough, they believe me. Oh. <laughs> so you start slowly. The complexity level changes. The first one goes thematic evaluation. You use a theme. Then you move into a procedure, one, two, three. Then you end up becoming more comfortable, more easy in your evaluation, and go into linguistic, philosophical, conceptualized evaluation. Remember, all of this should not take more than 30 seconds. 30 up to 45 seconds. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. I see people who, who spend time and they see the, the light. Still not green. Still not green. I'm going to continue. The fairy tale was big. Still not green. Oh my God, it's green now! <laughs> First solution, second solution, thank you very much. 
That's the mistake. Mm. Our greatest enemy is time. Time is our greatest enemy. And we are comfortable explaining our framework that we start a new speech. <laughs> That's the first problem. I need you to spend more time here, here in the second layer. In the second layer, we have two big items, nothing more. Every evaluation has two big ticket items, that's it. You either evaluate the content or evaluate the speaker. That's it. There's no other magic pill or spell. You evaluate the work or the worker. And here is the trick. The speech, the content, is something that happened in the past. The speaker sat down last week, and he or she wrote down the speech, and all she or he will do is present the speech. So the work of art, the speech, is done in the past. And there's a big chance that she or he will not repeat the speech, unless she or I was evaluated. <laughs> Big portion of us will not repeat the speech. It will lay down there. It's true? From one to ten, how many did you repeat? Four. Thank you very much. See? A little percentage. So, this is history, right? When you evaluate the speaker, you're evaluating the future. Mm. Because that guy or girl will leave the room with the same voice, with the same style, with the same tics in body language. So when you give him or her points on delivery, you are improving for the future. Mm. What is the problem here? The problem here is when we start evaluating delivery, we become personal. Because you are evaluating a person now. Mm. So if you want to be critical in your evaluation, put most of your critique here, here, in the speech. The speech is not the speaker. The speech is the work of the speaker. Mm -hmm. So you can bash, slash, destroy the speech. The speaker will remain guarded and safe. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to evaluate you as a person. I'm going to evaluate your work, mm -hmm. the speech. That's a trick you need to learn how to use. If you want to be serious in the evaluation, you want to put you, unwrap your wrath on the speech, focus first on that poor creation, the speech. When you're done, you're, you blew the steam off, go to the speaker and tell, yes, now I'm, I'm going to evaluate your delivery. I'll be kind and nice, so I'm going to help you for the future. Guess what? Evaluating the content is far more easier than evaluating the speaker. Why is that? Well, if you agree with me, though, mm -hmm. that I'm, when you evaluate the speech, it's far more easier than evaluating the speaker. Because it's a person, not Yes, it might be a reason, but there's an, another important reason. You don't know what the speaker's background is. The there's some emotion into it. Say it. You don't know what the background of the speaker is and how they're coming, so you might be interpreting it wrong. That's right. You, you don't know what's inside the ice, iceberg. Let me tell you one more thing. Your recommendations here are far more easier than your recommendations here. I'll give you an example. If you have a person with a bad voice, <coughs> what would be your recommendation? Change your vocal cords? <coughs> People are born and they die with the same voice, unless they pay a lot of money for speech therapists. So. This is one example. Another example, if you have a person who has an annoying nonverbal cue, <coughs> this annoying nonverbal cue, or yani, or what, or you, you know, this syndrome is picked up over years of habits. So it's usually it's very hard to really change what you have as a, as a speaker. So show up your intelligence in dissecting the content, the structure, the message. That's why, guys, in the evaluation sheet for contest, 50% is here. It's delivery, it's uh, development, it's impact, it's structure. 
30% is here. It's in delivery. That's why I find it very, very hard to focus here on the person rather than going and dissecting the content. So, if I want to help you dissecting the content, I would recommend three things. You start with the input to the process, the input to the speech. The input to the speech is also the introduction or the, the first part of the speech. You need, as an evaluator, not to repeat what was said, mm. but to trace what was said. The greatest value for humans that made us survive for millions of years is our ability to find patterns, patterns in speeches. You don't have to repeat what you have heard. You need to find the pattern behind that. And when I say that, I need you to put this <coughs> in mind. I have a comment in my hand. I will not repeat what happened. I will repeat, I will say, the framework upon which this content was written. I will trace, trace the elements of the speech. What went strong, what went weak in that content. Then I move quickly to the core of the speech. What is the core of every Toastmasters speech? The message. The message. The message. No, that's not. The story. The story is the core of every speech in Toastmasters. Find the core, you find the story. Go into the story, you'll find the message. That's why they call it sometimes the anchor of the speech. This is only applicable to Toastmasters. Only here we, get, we tell stories to receive a message or to send a message. But it's an effective tool. It's a very effective tool. So as an evaluator, I spend a lot of time looking at the core of the speech, the story of the speech. That's why the next slide will talk about the core of your speech. Okay. Bill Gove is a very famous trainer from the 1970s, he's an experienced trainer. He has a very simple concept. He said, if you want to give a powerful speech, tell a story. Give the concept. Tell another story. Give another concept. Why is that? People remember it easier. If you forget the principle, you remember the story. If you forget the story, you remember the principle. And people the like to hear. The duality of it. People yes. People like to hear stories. Exactly. <laughs> That's why grandmothers are very famous for us because they tell stories. Can you tell me? Why the holy books did not come back, come down with PowerPoints? <laughs> <laughs> they came with stories. Mm -hmm. There are whole chapters in the Holy Quran with stories. Yeah. The same thing in the Bible and Talmud. They come with stories. Stories are enriching, enchanting. Mm -hmm. They put us in a different place and time. Mm -hmm. And they all share the five W's. When and where. Once upon a time in a far, <coughs> far away land. They share who, the characters. They share what happened, the plot, from A to B. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they end up with why, the moral of the story. And these five W's will attack building the scene of the story. This is many speakers, they, they fall short in building the scene of the story. When was the story? What time period? Where was the story? You need to build that stage for the story. Because the more you build the stage, the more ready we are to be with you on that stage. Mm. Then you move on to building a plot. <coughs> a lot of speakers take too long to move the plot, to move the story, to move from point A to point B. You become frustrated. Come on, move on. What's the point? <laughs> take they, they take their time moving the story, they drag the story, they drag it, they drag it. So we need to really focus on where we can move from point A to point B, the twist in your story, the climax in the story, the point of conflict in the story. When you reach a climax, this is where the aha moment happens. Mm. Ah, she's right. 
Your elephant was your climax <laughs> moment, <laughs> wasn't he? I can't remember. <laughs> I remember. Your mirror was the climax of your story, right? He's got a good memory. I do, yeah. <laughs> when you, where you put a climax <coughs> in the story is where you deliver the message. This is the aha moment. There's something wrong with us as audience members. <laughs> we think three times faster than the speaker. <laughs> Ladies at home, if you give your husband the remote control, he will do something very funny, that remote control. And it's already laughing. We will switch between channels every five seconds. Why is that? Attention span. No. Short attention span. Short attention span. We switch on the first channel, we predict the end. We, cho we change. So ladies, if you talk to us and you accuse us of not listening, we have an excuse. We have a short span of attention. So when you say my boss was so bad today, I don't want to wait until the whole details are the scene, the plot. <laughs> I'll tell you so quit. <laughs> <laughs> Our solutions are very, very, very easy. We are hunters, Hannah. We are hunters. We want to hunt. So uh, from the caveman days, we always hunt. We go for the prey. So our attention plan span is very short. That's why I want to get to the point very, very fast. And next, we need to share the lesson. So after the aha moment is done, we share the lesson, call for an action. How do you call for an action? We use Mr. Darren LaCroix principle, mm. 2001 world champion. And he says, tell me the wethem. Where is the wethem of your story? What is the wethem? What's, What's in, it in it for me? What's in it for me? I <coughs> love your story, Dr. Osamaya. I love your characters. I want to go home with the lesson. What is the lesson? Mm. Give me something better that I can go home. And he says, your weapon should be, let them think, feel, or do something three days after they hear your story. Wow. That's his principle. Wow. And I think it's a very powerful principle. Don't tell us, go change the world. <laughs> go end the hunger. <laughs> Go and AIDS, tell me something nice and I can digest, mm. right? Something I can do, feel, or think three days after I listen to your story. And that's the weapon. Moving on, who is this guy? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. And why do you think I put his lovely picture on the slide? He's a genius. <laughs> of course he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not my answer. Why did I put his lovely face on the slide? And I said, deep dive, speaker. Because he attempted to so many times. He experimented so many times. Before he, he never entered the lab. Do you know that? <laughs> He's a <laughs> theoretical <laughs> physicist. Never entered the lab. Interesting. OK. Was he a good speaker? Probably not. No. I don't know. I don't know. Probably I don't know. know. I haven't heard him before. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a few quotations from him, but he was boring. <laughs> but he's famous of something. He's famous of many, many things, but one thing is he is very famous of. If you keep doing the same thing. Oh, that's a quotation. I like the quotation. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us this equation. Ah, right. <laughs> what is E equal to MC squared? See, I'm using the thematic evaluation. I'm giving you a framework right now. Relativity theory. E, e is energy. M is mass. B is mass or body. And C is the speed of light. Speed of light. I want you to take the same equation and put it on people when they speak, the delivery. How many of you felt so bored the moment you saw a speaker on the stage. <laughs> and how many of you thought that his or her energy was too low? So energy is very, very obvious. It's very, very apparent. It's the first thing we see. So if I come this night and tell you, good evening, I am going to motivate you in evaluation. 
Will you follow me? <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> We're asleep. <laughs> we That's why energy. Energy is less personal, more general. So when you evaluate a person's delivery based on energy, mm. you're not really finding fault in him or her. You're giving him a, a comment on how to be aware of that important aspect. Then we move on to, I know this is a bit cliche, but it always happens. We never plan where we put our bodies on the stage. Planning where we put the body, the mass on the stage comes much, much later when we pass this division and district. All we want to do is to deliver our material. We want to deliver it very fast. Mm -hmm. So we forget about where we position ourselves. And last but not least, the most difficult part to change is your vocal cords. So please, 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 please don't tell people to change their voices. <laughs> it's very hard to make people change their voices. They can manipulate their voice, but they cannot change their voice. You can manipulate your voice in Toastmasters using two tools. Use emotions or use character. If you have a person who is monotonous, he has monotony in his or her voice, tell him or her, your voice will be with you forever. Try to change it by putting characters in your story. Put a girl in your story, put an old man in your story, and imitate the voice, hmm. copy the voice. Or feel angry in your story, feel sadness in your story. Automatically, your voice will change. Hmm. Moving on. Close with impact, I have two important questions for you. Before you end, please express to the speaker how you felt in the end. Mm. So before you summarize, you say, overall, I felt that it was such a powerful speech. In my opinion, I thought it was a very inspirational speech. When you say that, you build the first heart, the first bridge to close right. And then you say, how do you want him to feel or her to feel? Mm. So please, when you want to close, tell him or her that she or he should attempt the next speech. Mm. Or repeat the same speech in your case. <laughs> <laughs> Build the two hearts. Make your ending an emotional ending. A powerful emotional ending. That's why you can close properly. And before, you, before I end this, I need to give you the don't-do list. Mm. And this is my favorite don't-do list. Mm. Number one, please, no déjà vu. <laughs> déjà vu in French means seen before. <laughs> so don't come and say, fellow Toastmasters, good evening. This evening we saw Toastmaster Tosin. She began her speech with a quotation. Then she said, her, her, herself and her mother went to Africa. Then she said, then they, they, fell, in, they fell into a pit. Then she came with the lesson. <laughs> we just heard the story. Why do you repeat it? <laughs> I think we heard the story, right? Why do right. you repeat it? Yes. And then we see the green light. Oh my God, I'm going to go to first suggestion. Second, thank you very much. So we, we waste time deja vuing the speech. Worse than that, we give new speeches. <laughs> 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 so the speech was from the basic manual, speech number seven, speak to inform. So when you speak to inform, you evaluate data, uh, stat, how easy the information was going. You see speakers doing this. Once upon a time, when I was young, my father told me, you will grow up to be a good person. Look at me now, I'm a good person. And all of you should be good people. What happened? <laughs> why, do, why are you speaking? You should be evaluating. You should be spending this valuable time evaluating and not giving new speeches. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm looking at you. Moving on. Ownership. Who gives you the right to tell the speaker, my speaker, <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah, do that. <laughs> my speaker was very motivated. Look at her, my, I, I own her. <laughs> this is my mobile, and this is her. My mobile, my speaker. <laughs> they don't even say the name of the speaker. Shh. 
she did very well, she's my speaker. <laughs> Immediately you build that bridge, that distance between you and the speaker. That, that false authority between you and the speaker. A trick I use is I play with the name of the speaker. Uh, in 2010, when he we went to his district, the speaker's name was Shuruk. Her name was Shuruk. So I said, Shuruk, your name in Arabic means sunrise. And your beautiful name made me realize how lucky I am that your speech was the same as sunrise to me. Oh. Her smile was from this <laughs> to this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Imagine if I told her, my speaker! <laughs> it's my book. <laughs> so please don't own the speakers. <laughs> Unless she or he is your wife, yeah. or the husband. Even then you cannot own her. <laughs> Number four is my favorite tip of this. There is a general list every evaluator uses. When you spend waste time at the beginning giving new speeches in Deja Vu and the green light is up, you forget <coughs> your evaluation and you remember the general list. So you were very good in body language. Eye contact, very good. <laughs> Hand movement, very good. Vocal variety, very good. For improvement, improve body language. Improve, <laughs> <laughs> improve eye contact. I think you're very good. Thank you very much. General list. Um. And the guy sitting there waiting, where was the feedback? <laughs> what happened here? And then we forget about the medicine. We, we identify the symptom, what's, what's wrong. We forget the medicine. At least give some Panadol, right? <laughs> give them some way they can improve. Can you imagine going to the doctor and telling doctor, I'm sick, I have fever. And he goes like, oh, very good. OK, go, leave. <laughs> <laughs> Show us the way, right, Rashi? They're smiling, I know. <laughs> Sometimes we become so enthusiastic, we talk gibberish. We talk different language, not English. So the speaker goes there 250 kilometers and they come back. We go into the, the, the detail of, of, of uh, evaluation that people are lost. They have no idea what you're saying. So if you talk gibberish, remember, the most effective evaluators are the simplest talkers, and not the, mm. the conceptualized speakers. Wait for amber. So not even green. 